Howdy, Matthew Bizgatti here. Welcome back to the channel. It was a beautiful Texas day today. I spent most of it outside. Didn't even pay attention to any of this crypto stuff or the drip garden or, or any of it. It was actually a really relaxing day. Spent some time with family. But now I'm back at it. Wanted to make a little bit of content. And I wanted to start off by saying, look at this drip coin chart. Look at this beautiful red just trending downward over the last seven days, over the last month. But not when we zoom out, not when we get to the three month, the one year. How about we go to all? And this is something that makes me incredibly excited. Not the only thing that makes me bullish and excited about drip, but one of the things. And it's because of the way I'm looking at this. It's because a lot of this contributes to my predictions for the future of drip and where it's going and none of it's making me cry none of it's making me sad or anxious about this whole project and if i had to guess if i had to guess we may come back down right about here we may end up around here again this 2025 you know at this, at this rate we may hit that again what do you guys want to guess? Maybe uh, April? Maybe April we might get hit that again? What makes me really excited about that is I think we know a lot of the reasons that that's actually occurring. And you'll see that on some of these charts that I'll, I'll show you on, on one of the other sites as well. We know the piggy, piggy bank just launched, right? And we know that was being announced for a moment. And as soon as anyone got wind of what that was going to be. Well, we knew it was going to be partially pigs, right? So as soon as we got wind of that, we knew that people were going to be uh, moving uh, stuff from drip. So if they had a lot in drip, they were going to possibly be selling that off. Maybe that wasn't the best thing for them to do if they were making steady in drip, but we knew that was going to happen, especially with the people who had a lot to claim. They wanted to get into the new the new uh, you know, little game that was launching, and and that makes a lot of sense. It was new, exciting, and, and it'll probably be that way for a moment. As people get the hang of it, as they figure out what the heck this is and how to use it, and as more information comes out of strategy, that'll, that'll keep happening. So it's the new shiny toy. You know, they, uh, a lot of those people still have money in Drip. They're just, they might be claiming a lot more right now to get into the piggy bank, um, or at least not adding more into Drip as they, they normally would as fresh capital. So we know why a lot of that happened. Um, so that's cool. That's, that's bullish because drip is still this steady 1% that you get every day on your, your drip that's in there. And so something cool about that is that for those who still have uh, drip in there, if in, in the faucet, if they're smart, I'm guessing they're going to keep compounding. They're going to keep rehydrating while drip is falling because... And, that, and that's just, you know, extra activity in, in, in that contract. And I'm guessing that if you're smart, you're going to be doing that because, well, it's falling. You don't want to claim drip right now to sell. You're, what are you going to do with it? I mean, you could, you could pair it uh, to that LP token, I suppose, the drip BUSD, and put it in the garden or in one of the farms. Um, but that's still good for drip in the long run. Uh, regardless, my point with all of that is that I don't think the majority are leaving the ecosystem who were in it. And it'll seem like that way with this specific contract because they're putting stuff into the piggy bank. They're putting stuff into the farms and growing dogs and pigs. And, and all of that doesn't reflect here on this chart except to see it going down. So we're going to see a lot of that. And I, and I hope it continues to drop down. Um, you know, the other addition is... March, April, May, those were the time frames that were predicted that the biggest wallets, that the whales would be cashing out all the way. And we saw that with you know, Stun of Breezy, what was that, just three, four days ago? That he, he, he finally got out of, the, out of the faucet. Now, I don't know if he has more wallets or if he's started more wallets. I haven't been following his videos that closely. But uh, I think we're going to see a lot of the kind of whale size accounts doing that and hitting their max. And so they're not going to be pulling as heavily from Drip either. And they may be starting with smaller wallets again. You know, if they weren't playing the, the strategy as opportune as they could, they might have to be starting from smaller wallets and building back up. So all of that's good news for us. 
if we can get it back down to like this 20, 25, that's when a lot of those people entered. And that's why their bags grew so quickly because they were able to enter at that 15, 12, $20 price and then ride that up. So not only were they getting that steady 1% on drip, but then the value of drip as a uh, dollar value exploded. And then you'll see when it hit that all-time high, there's a nice sell-off there when people were cashing in, excited about that. And then I think we probably started to see a lot of those big wallets mature. So all that downward trend to me is, is not scary because I think it's natural. I think it makes sense with the way the system works and uh, you know the way that, that it's made for longevity where it's not meant to just be where, I mean, these people can't just build and build and build these huge wallets because there is a max. There's always a max based on how much you deposit. So the more you deposit, the more you rehydrate, the bigger your max grows, but there's still a cap on that of that 100K drip. So that's, that's all pretty awesome. Um, and what else? When we're looking over here at, say, uh, the DApp Radar, looking at the high risk section, you know, who's, who's still at the top of uh, users despite this decline right now? You know, drip. Uh, we see them um, in the top three probably still on balance. Yeah, five. What about volume? Yeah, drip's still up here. So, you know, in the, in the grand scheme, it doesn't, even though there is this dip, there's a dip in, in all of these right now. I mean, the markets as a whole. And, and also, why do you think that is? Think about what's going on in the world right now. Uh, look at uh, look at Ukraine. Look at Russia. You know, if you're in if you're in any any of those areas where you're having this this issue and you were invested in something like this, you'd be selling off. And then, you know, maybe you're losing money in uh, in other markets because, well, economies are getting just shat on and and you know, collapsed on purpose by other countries and uh, people are having their funds restricted from the banks and all these things are going on. And you know, how many of those wealthy individuals are invested in some of these? Uh, protocols in crypto as a whole and you know even though drip is a separate token on maybe a separate chain we can still see some of those same effects it's not a it's not a huge effect but it can have some type of domino effect when you think about everything else going on and how that uh, kind of bleeds over it bleeds over not because it's the same ecosystem or it's the same currency or the same you know even the same exchange decentralized or centralized but because it's the same people that's where we still see some of these effects because it's the same people. The same people who are trading also have diversified in, in, into everywhere else. And so that's why we're seeing some of that. I thought I saw something interesting on this chart as well. Yeah, so we're seeing this, this dip here. But again, I think that's you know, what they call these natural corrections where not only the volume's obvious from people going to the pig pit, piggy bank and everything else, but when you rush up to these all-time highs, you see some of that pullback. You see some of that correction. And so what, why else is that exciting to me? It's exciting to me because in my prediction, in my estimation, completely my opinion, I think that we're going to hit those lows. I think that's going to be a great opportunity to buy more drip for the faucet. If we hit $20, I'm, I would, if I had any, enough free, well, I'm going to have some, some free, there'd be no way I, I could resist you know, buying into drip. And I think that's what's going to happen is we're going to hit that low on the chart. You know, we're going to hit a low like this again, even if it gets down to say 50. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know if it'll be able to get down there without bumping a couple times, because as we hit those lower prices, especially those who were in this previously and made a lot of money with it, they're going to recognize that for the opportunity it is. And I think they're going to buy really quickly whenever they hit those dips. So then that's probably why you're getting a lot of these leveled out areas here too. Like as we're hitting these low points, people are kind of averaging down. And if I had a, a good bid in still, more than just the one I have, I, I think that dollar cost averaging is, is a smart play as well if they're bullish on it coming back up after this, this dip here. And for those who have already been making money, which there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that got in all along this range here. And so they've made a lot when they hit this this peak and started claiming some. So I just I, I think that'll be too lucrative. And I'm I'm seeing if you go look at the Animal Farm chat, um, which includes all this ecosystem, the drip, because that's where Forex mainly posts. So that's where everyone can kind of congregates. You're gonna see so much activity constantly. You're gonna see so many users in there. So 
to me, that tells me that the hype hasn't died down. There's, and, and in the DeFi space, some of the, uh, the sentiment really matters. I mean, it matters with stock as well, but you have less overall participants in some of these DeFi protocols. So especially in the DeFi space, that, that trust in the developer matters. Um, you know, the bullishness about new projects coming down the, the pipe matters. And I see all that. In my estimation, I see all that activity. I see that positivity. I see the trust in the dev. Um, there's always going to be the naysayers, the people spreading whatever, the negativity. But I don't see that as the majority, even on the, you know, the side channels. So there's some people who got in kind of late myself included and so they're seeing some net, some downward trend and so they're getting worried and they're posting all these like panic things because they expected to get rich in a couple weeks or they've only been three or four weeks in like myself and they're just they're not seeing the growth that they want to see which i completely understand i just haven't put in more than i'm willing to lose and so i'm not that worried about it and like all these reasons i've been giving you all these charts the predictions that i'm making for myself I'm just really positive about this. And so that's, um, you know, it's going to provide a good opportunity for the garden as well as this goes down. You know, I'm bullish enough into it that if I had that free capital, even at this price, I would dollar cost average down and add more in here. And, cause I, you know, because I think that'll help with these spikes and getting back to that upward trend. But I think it's going to be a couple months. I think I'm going to compound down a couple months. We're going to see this hit some lows. Um, I think attention's going to shift back to drip from uh, the animal farm as much. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And uh, if not, you know, I'll be invested a little bit in the, in the farm as well. And so I'm excited to see where that, that goes. But what are, what are some of the things coming down the pipe? The developers talked about that NFT partnership, uh, talked about a game developer partnership to make some kind of metaverse uh, for drip and the animal farm that connects to the NFT provider, I'm talking about a partnership with Chainlink, uh, talking about some lending protocols based on drip, where you wouldn't have to claim and sell off your drip, but could kind of lend and borrow against it. That's incredibly interesting. I, I'm really intrigued to see where that concept goes. So there's a lot of positivity. And I, and my my predictions based off just these, these charts, I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to get down here again and then everyone who's made money and who knew this was an awesome opportunity is going to buy back in again, and then we'll we'll see that start hitting all all time highs again, especially with uh, all those those new um, partnerships that are coming down the line from from the developer from Forex. But for now, we're going to still see this dropping. I think I, I think we're going to continue to see that, and that doesn't bother me. We can even see some leveling off here. But, yeah, even the, even the garden, I think people, you know, if they were just looking at the sentiment right now, that's why we're seeing this horizontal movement. Uh, people are compounding. They're going to keep compounding what they have, but not seeing a lot of new adoption because, you know, they're seeing those charts and they're probably not, not liking where it's going or they didn't realize there was this decay here. And so people aren't adding new capital in. This isn't being hyped right now. You know, it's not, it's not the popular shiny new toy. That's the, uh, the piggy bank right now. And it's possible the developer, you know, he's created these multiple different projects, maybe he's spread himself a little thin. I think we could all agree on that. There's probably been too many new launches in too short of a time period. Because obviously, the uh, you know with Drip launching the faucet, there was a good enough time between that and the Animal Farm launching, it sounds like. And so that would have been a couple projects, you know, the Drip Garden... Uh, the faucet could have just held out with those couple things for a while before adding in these other components. Uh, but then the argument could be made that perhaps the quicker we get all these rolled out and all, we have all these options. And if you've seen some of the flow charts that people have created, this is a whole ecosystem that flows in and out between itself, um, which allows a lot more room for strategy. It's not so much of a, everyone trying to game the system. It allows a lot more room for strategic uh, operation throughout the system and kind of doing that distribution where, oh, okay, now I'm in the faucet. And then I, every now and then I take my claims once I've built up enough and I, and I put it into here and then I go into the garden and then, you know, when I get enough, I pull it out and then I go into this farm and then I'm making pigs and then I put them in the pig pen or I pair them up and then do a piggy bank, you know, or I'm making dogs, which then I can, can pair dogs to BUSD and make pigs. 
you know, so all these all these things that flow together. And then if we add in those NFTs, we add in whatever metaverse stuff and these new games. There's a lot coming down the pipe, and you could you could say that it's just too much, like too much too quickly. And and I think a lot of people would agree with you from that perspective. But I think we can look at it both ways. We can look at it both ways because there's positives and negatives. And uh, this is this is the whole thing about doing your own research. You look at these charts. Uh, you may have more experience at, at trading in general than me. I'm sure many of you do. You know, you look at these charts. You do your own research. You decide if this looks good or bad to you. I just think with the history we've seen, and with these whales finally maxing out their wallets here and making all that money, and we're going to see some drop. We're going to see some drop in volume. We're going to see some drop in price. But when that comes back up, all of us who are in the garden who've been compounding and who might even add in some more uh, capital later, we see this come back up. You see this come back up to where it was, to what, 44, 45, 46. And if, if that hits when you've compounded from, say, I'm just at 300, let's say it hits when I'm up to 1,000, when I'm up to uh, however many at that point, yeah, that that's really interesting. That's really bullish when you get up to that point. You know, let's say I'm compounded up to a thousand plants and I'm making a hundred a day. Uh, you know, let's say it occurs two months from now when I'm around 60 and I'm making 167 in a day and it just rapidly increases from there. But it, it all depends on that LP value, the value of that token depends on the percent of the decay. There's a lot of variables there, but we could be sitting really pretty. And, uh, you know, if you've been putting into faucet and your dollar cost average down, you buy even more drip when we're at a low, which I'm hoping we'll hit at some point, then I just uh, I expect that we, we really want to see that chart come back up, and I hope that we do. That's, that's my prediction. That's what I'm going to see happen. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. But again, these are all guesstimates, right? None of us have these crystal balls. None of us actually can tell the future. We have no idea. We can only operate based on the information we have, and I'm not an expert, some of you are, as far as trading, maybe even in the crypto space, you're an expert way above my level here. I'm always welcome to hear those comments. I, I love hearing that uh, expertise from, from others and what they think. But as far as the negativity, I mean, if you're already invested, you know what you're doing. You hopefully have a strategy and you're sticking to it. And if you're not invested yet and you have that much negativity about it, then you don't invest. And it's, and it's that simple. You know, this is not me telling you what to do. This is me telling you what I think is going to happen and telling you why I'm invested. So I'm, I'm still bullish. I'm still confident on it. And I'm going to keep making content talking about it because really all these projects do perform better as the contract balance goes up. We want more contract balance. We want more uh, participation. We want more new capital flowing in. And that helps the longevity of the whole project. Um, even though Forex has built all those other delays in there, like the decay or the taxes when you're, when you're buying in and selling out on, mo on most of his projects here. There's uh, some type of taxes. He's built whale, t whale taxes into uh, the faucet, which really helps when the, you know, the big guys are uh, withdrawing out and cashing out and getting to their maximum. You know, some of those guys end up having a 50% whale tax or a 30% whale tax. And so that goes back in and helps the whole system. So there's, there's a lot of those things built in. But of course, you know, we're going to keep hyping this if I'm confident in it because I'm trying to be as honest as I can. And if I was worried, I would say, oh, let's all give up on it right now. You know, <laughs> stop compounding. Just ignore it. Turn the computer off. Don't look at it again. That's, that's what I'd say if I was worried about it because that's what you would do if you were honestly recommending something or, or that, you know, that's what I would be doing. And I would, I would log that and I would demonstrate that and say, Hey, I've given up on this, but that's not where I am. That's not where I am. And I don't think we're getting there just yet. Uh, we're going to keep seeing this dip. This dip is, is normal. And we all know why it's there. And then, uh, I'm hoping to see that rise back up. I want to see this contract balance come back up. Um, but that's, not likely it's at the moment because it's hard to attract new people to put new capital in um, when they're not seeing a rise. And they're not going to see a big rise until this LP value comes back up 
And that's not really going to happen until people get back towards drip, until Forex you know, gets back to focusing on drip and some of those new partnerships come out and those whales get sold out of the system. You know, all those things are going to happen. And I think we'll see a positive upturn. That's my prediction. Um, and then, you know, guys who are making money off the piggy bank, making money off these animal farms, they might throw money back in here if they've already been making money at it. But right now, they're just compounding. They're not really adding any fresh capital. They're just compounding based on what they have. And they're probably withdrawing and taking some of that, that money as profit or putting it into those other systems. So I think this is all natural and makes sense with the way I understand the system and the mechanisms within it and the way it's coded. So, I've made videos like this before uh, as far as why I'm, why I'm, why I'm bullish, but I just kind of had this, this kind of realization and this prediction regarding this chart that I think that's where we're going we're gonna to really see an upturn is after those next couple months, and then I think we're going to get kind of a level out and then back up as people buy into another one of these big dips. Yep, so that's it for me tonight. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope some of that was informative. I'm going to uh, answer some comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, I am a single father here in Texas, so I, I usually just get time in the evenings after work and, and everything else to reply to comments to make some content. So that's why you'll see you know, five, six, however many uh, videos. I try to kind of piecemeal it and not prattle on like this so long. It's like a 21 minute video we're at right now. I know nobody usually watches that long. They kind of skip around, uh, which is why I try to keep them a little shorter. But um, I like to look back on these. I want to look back on these and either laugh myself to sleep because I was incredibly wrong. Or I want to look back and say, oh, man, look at that amazing prediction I made. Because that's how it works in these games, right? I could be telling you a stock tip. I could be telling you what the price of bread is in two months. It's not something I'm an expert on or that I can predict. But I have made a prediction. And so I'm basing my strategy off of that prediction for myself. Uh, tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure you have an opinion. <laughs> so once again, you guys have a good one. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. And I wish you all the best of luck in your continued endeavors trading in the crypto DeFi space.